Let's go back to January. Uh, you're walking off the stage there at uh, Toyota Stadium. How satisfying was it to be the starting quarterback of a national championship team? You win the MVP, but how satisfying given everything that you had gone through? It was a really good feeling. Uh, it really was. And um, yeah, the way the year ended the year before and, um, you know, it was tough losing to those guys and, and uh, you know, not finishing the way we wanted to that year and finishing for the seniors. And so uh, to kind of, you know, speed up a year and, and go through the adversity that we went through, through injuries and, and different things on our team and then um, be able to, to beat James Madison and uh, a team that we felt was, was really, really good. And, um, you know, there's no one other, you know, no other team we wanted to play in that situation. And then uh, to go out on top the way we did, especially for those seniors, those guys, um, you know, were, incredibly influential in our, in our program and, and personally on me. And so uh, it was a great feeling going on out on top with those guys. Was there an extra sense of gratification uh, knowing what happened two years previous when you did have to let Carson take the team back over? Um, it was just a different, it was a different feeling. I wouldn't say it was uh, any more gratifying or, it, but it was different. It, you know, I knew going into the, to the first national championship or, or the second one that, you know, Carson was the quarterback for, uh, I knew I wasn't playing. Uh, I knew I had to be ready as a backup, you know, had I been uh, called in, but it wasn't my game. And so to be able to, to be the one going out there and, and be in the huddle, that was a cool feeling. Uh, and to look in the huddle and, you know, and see Coonert and to see uh, Bryce Mesner and, and those seniors, Jeff and Connor. And uh, so that was the cool part is being in that huddle with, with that group. You've never been the oldest quarterback in the room. You always had somebody older, Cole Davis, Carson's been there. So how has your role evolved over the last couple years now that you are the oldest guy in the room and you've got guys looking up to you? Yeah, it's come a long way. Uh, you know, I felt like I was the guy kind of getting poured into for, for the majority of my career. I had somebody that was, you know, giving me information and helping me along. And, and now, you know, I'm at the top of it. And so I got to, you know, reciprocate some of that and uh, make sure I'm doing everything I can to, to help those young guys. And uh, I'm just trying to, to be a sounding board for them and uh, be someone that they can talk to. And if, you know, there's something I'm seeing, I, I'm trying to make sure that, you know, I verbalize it and communicate it the best way I can. When Carson went down, down, you were a redshirt freshman with no experience. What made you confident enough to lead this team? Honestly, it was the people around me. Uh, Coach Hedberg and, and Coach Palsek did a really good job making sure, you know, throughout the week I knew what was going on and, and stuff wasn't going too fast for me. And then when we got to Saturday, there were so many good players around me. And uh, the offensive line that we had that year uh, was, was exceptional. And so I, I relied on those guys. It, you know, it was turn around, hand the ball off as many times as we can. And, and you know, if I have to make a play, try to run around and, and see if I can do it. But there were, you know, such good people on that team. And, and the defense that year got better every Every single week and uh, you know I wasn't asked to do a whole lot and, and that's a credit to those guys. Now this year there's two redshirt freshman quarterbacks with no experience in case they do need to come in and play what are you doing to instill that confidence? You know the biggest thing is reminding them that you know they're playing against the best defense in the country every single day. Uh, you're not going to see someone disguise coverages better than Robbie Grimsley. You know, Aaron Seidel, uh, all these guys, uh, you're just not going to find better players. And so understanding that uh, you're being groomed um, with really good coaches, uh, really good leadership from the upperclassmen, and, and then you're competing against the best every day. And so uh, when you get to Saturday, uh, you're going to be prepared. And um, you've got all the tools to handle it. And so now it's just about going out, relaxing, and, and trusting you know, the process that, that has gotten you there, and just playing. And, and that's the advice I got, and that's the advice I'm trying to give to them. Let's play the name game. I'm going to give you a name. I want you to tell me what each of these people means to you, okay? All right. We're going to start with an easy one, Chris Kleiman. Oh, man. Um, yeah, you'd think it'd be easy, <laughs> but uh, he's really special to me. Uh, he's put a lot of faith in me and trust in me and um, ha has challenged me uh, a ton uh, throughout you know, my four years here. And, uh, he means the world to me, he really does, and uh, I couldn't ask for a, a better person, a, a better man to, to lead our group, to, to be a leader in our community. Uh, he's an unbelievable football coach, and I've learned uh, so much about the game between the lines from, from Coach Kleiman, but uh, the type of person he is and the conversations I've had you know, about his family uh, and about life are so much greater to me, and uh, he's really special to me. Randy Hedberg. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's not a better quarterback coach in the country as, as far as, um, you know, 
just being a calming presence for you when you walk in the huddle, uh, when you come off the field and, and I talk to him, you know, through the headset and stuff, he, he's just calm. Um, he does a really good job of, of listening, which I think is really important because uh, at the quarterback position, it's, it's a lot of, you know, you're pulling the trigger. And so if you're not comfortable with something, uh, it's probably something that shouldn't be in the game plan or uh, something that should be called. And so he does a really good job of, of making sure the whole room's comfortable with, with what we're doing and, um, and then does a really good job listening and um, just being someone that, you know, I can go and talk to and um, does an unbelievable job communicating with, with the whole room. Carson Wentz. Oh yeah, uh, he's a brother, a mentor to me, one of my you know best friends, and uh, he, you know just really grateful for for how he treated me when I first got here, uh, made me feel at home, uh, you know helped me understand that you know this is a brotherhood and there's relationships beyond football uh, in this, and so uh, he's been an, an awesome friend for me for for a long time and, and always will be. Uh, the last one here, your dad. Oh man, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, he's the best. Um, hey, I didn't expect that. Uh, sorry. Uh, just uh, the amount of support I've gotten from from my parents. Um, you know, specifically my dad is is unbelievable. Uh, they've never missed a game. Um, you know, they have a blast being around this community. Um, you know, my friends. Uh, different people that they've met, uh, you know, through the games and, and through being up here, and, and people have treated them uh, unbelievably well, and, and that's what this community is so great. And to, to see people, how people have embraced my parents, is, is honestly uh, really special to me. And yeah, I, I don't have a lot of a lot to say, I guess. Um, yeah, he's really special. I, yeah. Whenever you walk off the field, when uh, be it at the Fargo Dome, your final time as a senior, or hopefully again down at Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas, what do you want people to remember Easton Stick Bison quarterback as? Yeah, um, you know, hopefully just uh, a guy that they know that that valued uh, the game and valued the people he was around, uh, someone that that brought their stuff every single day and wanted to work as hard as I could and um, just you know, value relationships. Uh, we talk about having a genuine appreciation, you know, for everybody in the program. And uh, I try to do that. And I hope, uh, you know, that that's something that, you know, I think our whole senior class is, is trying to do and what our program tries to do. And so hopefully it's that, someone that worked hard and, and really just valued the people around them.